Scientist Stanislav Kirilov was not allowed to leave the country under Soviet laws and he had to do so arbitrarily and at the risk of his life. On December 13, 1974, the cruise ship Soviet Union was sailing in the waters of the Pacific Ocean. On board Soviet tourists, having fun, drinking, and generally having a great time. A lone man with a towel in his hands walks quietly across the deck to the stern, there pulls out a bag with flippers, mask and snorkel from under the towel, puts on this equipment and jumps overboard. This man's name is Stanislav Kirilov, he is a Soviet oceanologist, yogi, and future traitor to the motherland. His jump was neither a suicide attempt nor a drunken prank. He simply had a great need to flee his native country. The Way to the Ocean by Soviet standards, Kirilov was an unusual man, from his youth he practiced yoga, slept on nails, went on 40-day hunger strikes, and meditated. His career also developed romantically, he worked as a psychologist, a long-distance navigator, a diver, and an aquanaut. As a scientist he worked in the underwater laboratory Chernomer, where he spent several months at a depth of 14 meters underwater. One thing saddened Kirilov, who was in love with the sea, was the impossibility to work abroad, together with the world's leading oceanologists. We had an agreement with Jacques Cousteau on research in Tunisia, but the project fell through. The expedition to the atolls of the Pacific Ocean also fell apart. I spent a year preparing the diving part. But they didn't let me get a visa again, they wrote that it was inexpedient to visit a capital country, he wrote in his diaries, which were later published in his book Alone in the Ocean. The reason was a relative abroad, Kirilov's sister got married and went to Canada. The USSR considered people with relatives abroad unreliable and did not allow them to leave the country. Step into the unknown. Eventually Kirilov decided to flee the USSR. The opportunity presented itself in 1974, he read an advertisement for the cruise from winter to summer. The liner Soviet Union was going on a 20-day voyage from Vladivostok to the equator and back without calling at any foreign ports. Kirilov climbed aboard with the tourists. Outside the door of every cabin there was music, drunken shouts, laughter. Tourists were partying every precious day of their vacation, Kirilov later wrote in his diaries. For appearance he took part in the get-togethers, but he himself mostly kept his eyes on the ocean, watched the stars and studied the ship and he realized that he could only jump from the stern of the main deck, directly under the propeller. Besides, he had only a rough idea of where he was sailing, the liner was heading south past Taiwan and the Philippines. I asked God for luck and took my step into the unknown, Kirilov described his jump. I surfaced and was terrified. A huge hull of a liner and its gigantic spinning propeller were beside me. Between life and death. Kirilov, an excellent swimmer, was not caught by the propeller, but that was only the beginning of his ordeal. For the first night he swam through the lights of a departing ship. Then, scolding himself for not taking a compass, he oriented himself by the stars at night and lost his way during the day. Kirilov sailed hour after hour without stopping. Beneath him stretched the boundless ocean, which the scientist loved so much, the ocean breathed like a living, native, kind creature. It was worth tilting his head to the water, and a fantastic phosphorescent world opened up to the eye. However, later other sensations appeared, my face, neck and chest were badly burned by the sun. I was feverish and more and more inclined to sleep. At times I lost consciousness for a long time. On the second day he finally saw the shore, but the strong current carried him back, and there seemed to be no more chances to survive. Salvation only on the third day after the jump, when Kirilov was almost oblivious, a huge wave tossed him onto the shore of the small Philippine island of Siargo. After locals found the oceanologist, information about his escape quickly reached the international press. After an investigation by Philippine authorities, the fugitive was deported to Canada, where he was granted Canadian citizenship. Life after the escape some consider Stanislav Kirilov a hero, others consider him an egoist who let his loved ones left behind in the USSR down. His younger brother Valentin suffered. He lived in Leningrad, worked as a long-distance navigator and had access to western ports, Kirilov's wife Belena recalls. After his escape, 
Slava was sentenced to 10 years in absentia for treason, and Valentin was kicked out of his job. His wife left him, he became poor and began to drink. He is no longer in this world. At first Stanislav worked in a pizzeria, then in oceanographic firms in Canada, America, Hawaii, in the Arctic Ocean. In the spring of 1986 he came to Israel, took a job as an oceanographer at the University of Haifa. The scientist died rather absurdly on January 29, 1998, he was only 62 he was diving and got entangled in the nets. His partner raised him to the surface, but it was too late. When his wife Elena was given her husband's things, among them were fresh records he had kept diaries until his last day. His wife collected them and published a book, Alone in the Ocean, from which the world learned about perhaps the most risky escape from the USSR. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.